Hi there, today on this James the Bike Guy, we're going to talk about replacing air tokens in your RockShock fork. In this case, we've got a RockShock Revelation, the new 35mm, so this is uh, similar to a pike. But when I was out on the trail getting the suspension set up on this, uh, the thing I ran into is getting sag set up right. Uh, I was able to do, but in a whole ride, that's how much of the travel I used. So I used somewhere in the range of about 75% of the travel, and that means it's time for an adjustment to the air spring assembly. With uh, RockShock, they make uh, different air tokens that are inside of there, and we'll go over how to go ahead and replace those. Uh, but let's first talk about why we need to change tokens in an air spring assembly. All right, guys, so let's talk about the air spring assembly. So in a shock, you're going to create this graph on how air pressure works. So this is going to be the amount of travel. And then here is going to be the ramp. Now, in the, uh, the typical shock, what's happening is you're setting air pressure and as the shock goes through its travel, you're shrinking the size of the air chamber, which means that the air pressure is going to ramp up. So if we were to go with just your average amount of spacer, you know, your shock pressure would start somewhere around here and then as you go through travel, it'll go up. So as you go through travel, the air pressure that's inside of the shock is actually going to ramp up the further through the travel that you go. Now, in this case, what we're trying to do is we're trying to have enough small bump compliance in that first third of the travel. And then finally, in the final third of the travel, you're trying to eliminate uh, bottom out of the suspension. So that's the suspension compressing and uh, and totally blowing through all of its travel. Now on these shocks, we want to set up enough air pressure that uh, you have proper amount of sag. Most typical, typical shocks, the sag is about 30%. And if you have that with too much sag, uh, you're going to blow through the suspension travel really quick. It's going to feel super soft. And then if you have it with not enough sag, what's going to happen is the shock travel isn't going to be able to droop enough when you're going through some of the, uh, the rough terrain, as well as it's going to feel really rough when you're hitting all these bumps. So we want to set sag up to about 30%. Now, to be able to manipulate this uh, shock curve or this air pressure curve, you can add and remove tokens. Tokens are uh, small pieces that I'll show in just a few that uh, actually add and remove the volume of the air chamber. So if you add a token and, uh, and what happens is at the same given pressure, the curve, instead of going out like it is here, it's actually going to ramp up to a much higher pressure. So that's plus token. This would be average. And then of course, in this case, if your average pressure, if you remove a token from it, you add air volume, what will happen is it's going to come out. And this is minus token. So what we're going to do, because right now I have the sag set up perfect on the bike, but I'm not using enough of the travel, we need to remove a token. So let's go ahead and do that and take a look. Now when removing air pre er, the token out of the shock here, uh, we need to remove this full air spring assembly. And to do that, we're going to go ahead and take the air cap off first. And what we'll want to do is make a note of the air pressure that we have in here. So 
So right now it looks like I'm running uh, right at about 80 PSI. So we're gonna keep that in mind because that's where we're gonna pump the shock back up to when we take it out on the next test ride. So here, let's go ahead and now depress all of the air out of the shock. And you're gonna see it compress all the way down. And that's now because we've got the air out of the shock there. Now, I believe this is a 24 millimeter uh, socket that would go onto here for us to be able to remove the air spring assembly. But in my case, unfortunately, I don't have uh, a 24 millimeter socket. So what we can get away with doing is we're gonna go ahead and take a nice piece of electrical tape here and wrap it around the hex of the, uh, the air spring assembly here. And then we're gonna go ahead and use just a standard adjustable wrench to go ahead and take it off. The reason we're putting the electrical tape around is so that way when we remove this, uh, we're not gonna mar up the nice aluminum finish on the air spring assembly. So we've got our adjustable on. Now it's just as simple as a lefty-loosey, righty-tighty to get this removed. And out is going to come our air spring assembly. So, We've got our air spring out. It looks like there is one token attached to the air spring. And I'm gonna go ahead and remove this single token and replace it back into the shock. So that way we can uh, lower the air, or rather raise the air chamber volume. Uh, and then in that case, allow me to go through more of the suspension travel uh, for a given pressure. So now that we have removed that air spring token, let's go ahead and screw this back into the fork. Once you get it snug, you do just want to tighten up, be careful. It is aluminum threads. They're fairly fine, so you're not gonna wanna go too, too crazy. But we can go ahead and remove our electrical tape there. Toss our shock pump back on, and we're gonna go ahead and bring the air pressure up here. So right now, it's obviously gonna show zero. up to about 50 pounds and you can see the uh, the shock is already started to re-extend all right so we've got the air pressure back up to the uh, 80 PSI that we had it at before. So let's go ahead and take our shock pump off. The next step is to take it out on the trail and see if lowering the, or excuse me, extending the amount of air volume that we have in the shock does what we need to do to still have the proper amount of sag and be able to full uh, use the full length of our travel. So in conclusion here, we've talked about how to uh, add or remove the RockShock tokens from your fork. And we know that if your air spring is in the position it is right now, you've got sag set up correctly and you're still blowing through your travel, then that means 
We want to increase the ramp of the air pressure so we'd add more tokens into the shock. And then if you've got SAG set up correctly, but you're still not able to get the full uh, travel of your shock, then that means we want to be taking out some air tokens. Keep in mind, riding style and the like all are really determinate to how many tokens you need and that sort of thing. Uh, somebody who's doing lots of drops and really crashing through suspension might need to run quite a few more air tokens, whereas a smoother rider or maybe one that keeps it more on the ground and just wants supple suspension might need to remove some air volume. All we needed to do to be able to uh, take care of this is have our handy dandy shock pump uh, setting the sag and everything up before we start adjusting air volume and then a 24 millimeter or just a standard box wrench or excuse me adjustable wrench with some electrical tape to help keep our suspension parts looking nice so thanks for watching uh, I'll do a follow-up and go from there and like that guys we can take a look at the suspension and see that after a good trail ride, I've used about 90% of the front suspension, which is a good sign considering this is a just a standard trail ride without any, uh, any specific drops or anything like that that would have caused me to bottom out the suspension. So removing that token made all the difference in allowing the front end to be more supple and ride better. Thanks for watching this James the Bike Guy. To subscribe for more, go ahead and give a click to the scale in the center. And remember to like the videos and comment below to let me know what you think.